as a presentation overview, I'm just going to give a brief introduction to CLT, cross laminated timber, because there's always a few new fresh faces in the room. And then I'm going to talk about what I call Industry 3.x and Industry 4.0. We're not quite at Industry 4.0, but I'll break into what my understanding of this Industry 3.x is, where I think mass timber is going to take us in the construction industry, and uh, how we play a role in that right now. That integrates into a system that I'm terming right now as a rapid project deployment system, and we'll show you a few projects that we've used this system on, give you a base understanding of how that system works, maybe how you can potentially implement it on your next project, and uh, we'll cover some other building systems that exist that we've seen success in, try and inspire you, and I'll close up with some questions, hope hopefully. So these are all a, a selection of projects that we've completed. You can see there's a wide variety of, of shapes and forms there. And to start, I just want to remind everyone that this isn't a local phenomenon to Portland. It's not local to the west coast of North America. This is a global revolution that we're undertaking right now, and it's happening all around the world. So we're seeing these are a collection of projects all over five stories throughout the world, all built with mass timber. I think there's 160 I've tracked so far. This is just a quick view. So let's change the world one mass timber project at a time, and I hope we can move forward with that. So what is mass timber and what is cross slam CLT? So mass timber, cross laminated timber, CLT, is one type of mass timber building component. There's a whole bunch of other ones out there. As uh, my company's not a manufacturer of many of them besides Gulam, I'm not gonna talk about them, but they exist and you can talk to many of the other exhibitors there. And it uses smaller dimensional, generally trying to aim for lower grade fiber and combining it into a larger massive panel pan, massive panel product. Ours are 10 feet by 40 feet by up to one foot thick. And it can be used in a two-way span system. That's what un is unique about CLT beyond other mass timber products. It's also very dimensionally stable if it gets wet during construction or something else. So the mass timber package. Crossland CLT is the cornerstone of a mass timber package of a fully coordinated 3D modeled CNC machined customized kit of parts that's delivered just in time to the, the, fabric, the installation site. So that's what we're going to talk about with Industry 3.x and 4.0, how that fits together and how this mass timber building package comes together. This is a, a sample from First Tech and you'll see us, we're going to walk through the First Tech project as a bit of an example of this process here. So these CLT systems along with other glue lamp systems can be used for floors, roofs, walls, cores, and shafts, anything you want to build, there's usually an application, but there's many times we'll have designers come to us and we'll say, oh, that design, you know, maybe not so much, this is what you need to do to try and make it more cost effective and build a successful project. We're not going to go out there and build projects that don't make sense and create a poor example for a growing industry. We want every project to be a success, so don't be offended if we decide there's a project that maybe isn't the best application for mass timber. So it works for many applications, but there's project specifics that make it either stronger or weaker, a better option against concrete or steel. So industry 4.0 and industry 3.x. What is conventional construction? What do we do? We take raw materials, we move them to site, we're taking raw lumber, we're taking concrete aggregates, we're mixing them on site, building it together. It's a very old world system of building an outcome. What is Industry 4.0? It's a far opposite of that, which is integrating the Internet of Things, parametric design, intelligent building systems, all combined into one neat, perfect little package. We're not quite there yet. I don't know if we're going to get there, but we're definitely on that path and integrating many parts of that. So I'm calling that Industry 3.x. So it's, uh, we have to go there, through this usually a few times, but uh, eventually it starts to make sense what these industrialization steps are and where we're at in that process. So more characteristics. See, this is a, a generic slide I picked out from Industry 4.0 and what it entails for a production company. And I've crossed out some of the things that we don't have, such as um, the Internet of Things, which is cell phones talking to each other and parametrically designing through you order something on your phone. It goes straight to the production facility and starts automatically making the spoons you ordered or something online. We're not at that level, but we are doing integrated detailing with you producing a 3D model, you're sending us the files to us digitally, 
and now we'll fabricate exactly what's in your files. So it's not a fully automated system, but it is a semi-automated system. So we have semi-autonomous robots, CNC machines that are cutting these, these uh, profiles and orders out. We have virtual simulation of our production facility, of construction on site, of all the other processes wrapped around there. We have horizontal and vertical integration of services and project delivery methods, of project teams, how they integrate together between the architect, the engineer, the contractor, and the suppliers. We have, uh, I put uh, subtractive manufacturing. There's also additive manufacturing. At some point we'll see 3D printed steel and other options become a viable solution in this construction matrix. We have augmented reality with VR and big data analytics. I'm not really sure what that means for the mass timber industry, but we do look at large scale buildings and many of the cost price input points behind them and combine those to see what's most efficient on a variety of projects. So this is where I'm deeming we're part of this industry 3.x movement and we'll keep growing further until we get to industry 4.0. So I expect some questions about this after, but uh, yeah. So more characteristics of industry 3.x. So we have 3D building information, BIM driven models. We have sem semi-automated design processes where we're using components of parametric design within these 3D models to increase the design speed and make it easier on our, our labor inputs. We have electronic document transfer and order input, so we're sharing those files that are electronic and using them as contract documents instead of reverting to a PDF that's stamped by an engineer and rereading it and drawing it out electronically. We're going from those base files in an electronic format. Um, we're using automated production information, so we're optimizing our plants in a computer-controlled environment. We have semi-automated CNC machines that are almost automatically programming what we're going to cut, and we're optimizing them with human input. We have integrated quality insurance, so 3D scanners, QR codes, all of these items running, and just-in-time shipping so that you're getting the product that you ordered, this whole building package, a very complex system, just in time, perfectly fit on site. So all of these systems mixing and matching together, that's this industry 3.x system and it will grow to this industry 4.0 and you'll hear that way outside the mass timber world but in the overall manufacturing and tech industry. That's what, what our future faces for better or worse but we'll all need to learn to, to be a part of that. So the digital world, we see product design, production planning, um, production engineering is all digitally controlled and monitored and then we move into real world applications, the actual production and services being delivered and rendered to our clients. So this is an intelligent production control system. So that's my overview of Industry 3.x and I hope it somewhat makes sense. It's the first time I've fully explained it. But yeah, how that fits into rapid project deployment. So these are these projects we're using that manufacturing system to help deliver and bring to market. So we have an in-house um, design team providing design services. So this means we can provide engineering services, we can provide the drafting and detailing services, we can provide all the electronic information that needs to go into this model to run this system we're talking about and produce a manufactured product that comes out on time, on spec, and on price. Um, to make this work, we need this integrated 3D BIM model, and I'm sure you'll hear me repeat this almost every single slide because it truly is the most important part of what we're doing. And from there, we'd encourage the architect, the engineer, and the GC to be on board with that from the beginning. The GC most likely is going to need their own internal BIM manager to make sure everything is coordinated beyond our scope. You need the MEP services in there. You need um, other integrated services in there. And then our team will usually have an internal project manager where we might integrate with other large um, tech detailing teams to help that meet our project timelines. And I'll give an example of that later on. And this all comes out in a process of simplified installation of your, our kit, and, kit of parts at the end of the day. So Mass Timber is a link between construction and tech industries. We are a tech manufacturing company. We're not just producing Mass Timber that goes out there. We're on the leading edge of construction and this is what that looks like. So looking at uh, one project I'm sure everyone's heard a, a lot about today, but First Tech, this was um, part of the rapid project deployment system. 
So it's a post and beam and panel system. I'll talk more about these systems later on. It's 156,000 uh, square feet of floor area. And what's amazing about this project is in terms of when Structure Lamb was brought on board, it was five months from the point of sale to the first deliveries on site, and specialty engineering and services weren't started or, or rendered yet. So we had to complete all those services, all that design detailing, and finish that off before we could deliver the first panels. In terms of man hours, this is over 2,000 man hours, which is over a year of work for someone. So we need integrated, coordinated teams to pull this together and make that a reality. Um, the prefabrication included all MEP services. I think you've heard the number before, but there's over 4,200 MEP penetrations in there, all exactly modeled where they need to go and fit in place. I think they might have had to rework two or three at the end of the day, but that's just because the services moved over time. There wasn't mistakes in the process. This allowed um, saved on-site manpower, reduced schedule risk for the contractor and the team, and contributed to their bottom line directly. And they'll, they'll happily tell you that and want to continue this process on all of their projects. So Crossland CLT provided a best value proposition for the client compared to concrete or steel options. And I think they're throwing around numbers about a 4% cost, project cost savings overall, including timelines, which were expedited. So the total install time was around 12 weeks for the mass timber portion. And Swinerton builders did a self-install themselves. So usually we see installers looking for additional help. They chose to undertake this, take all the risk on their own, learn what they're doing, and move forward with that. So the specialty engineering, we took an R-scope and uh, equilibrium consulting based in Vancouver, underdid the specialty connection design for our team under our direction there. Um, they worked on integrating the specialty connections for all the glue lamb to glue lamb all the diaphragm design for the CLT in the structure. Um, we had to perform some very rapid initial concept to review to make sure what we bid and what we were processing was going to work with the project as we had that short timeline. And then we moved on to refining specialty engineering focus and working on specific connections like this double stacked RICON connection that had to undergo academic testing before it was certified to meet the loads that we needed to handle and the fire ratings for a one hour burn time around the beam times. So Mighty Con, the, the supplier for this product, helped, uh, helped us through that process to make sure that that testing was successful and we could provide this cost optimization service to our end client in this very short time window. So this is all integrates back into these very tight, integrated, digitally modeled teams that have to function almost as one entity to ensure project success, especially when you're on these rapid timelines here. So what does this 3D BIM model entail? It produces our approved assembly drawings issued for construction. We really need to give this a new term because there's many acronyms out there. This one actually stands for at least five different things in the, in the industry, but that's a whole other topic there. It produces our single piece shop drawings that we give to our floor to tell them exactly what they're producing and so they can do in-house quality control and quality insurance processes. It does the CNC based geometry that goes to the CNC machines and that's almost an automated um, design process but there's a human technician there who will optimize that. It gives the production lists, the hardware lists and the load plans which sound very inane but there's a lot of work that goes into that load planning and sequencing to make sure every single panel is transported <coughs> safe to site and then installs correctly on site. Um, so for the best outcome, you need this integrated BIM model and it should be started as early as possible. So any potential owners or developers in here should be looking at hiring a third party team to run this from the beginning or get your architect, your GC, your engineer on the same team so that they're integrating very early on and can remove downstream waste, double input of, of work packages. Um, on this project, we did a number of uh, third of the modeling ourselves, and we used CAD makers and other modeling team to develop another two-thirds of the project to meet those rapid timelines on there. So you need to be very organized to work cross disciplinary sorry, between multiple teams there. And the design process is usually what we find it to be the bottleneck to production. It's not fabricating it, it's not pressing the panels, it's not making the glue lamb, it's designing the building to a fabrication level beyond the, the architectural and engineering level, but exactly what we're going to fabricate 
down to the 16th of an inch. What's in these 3D models? So this was for first tech here. You see the CNC frame glue lamp columns. You see um, specialty connections over here. So there's specialty connections and there's pre-engineered connections. We tend to try and reduce the amount of specialty connections because they have various quality control issues and longer timelines. If we can use pre-engineered connections, they fit together quickly on site and reduce that risk for the overall client. All these are located um, beyond the 16th of an inch. I, we, we generally work in metric because inches allow rounding error in the shop. So uh, someone measuring a 16th or something will round up quite quickly. If we give them decimals, we either have to measure it dig digitally or get a sign off that it works exactly. And it controls all the CNC information for the glue lamp and the CLT in our process. So from that 3D model, now that that's complete, we move on to a customization of the data, which is just a little tweaking and optimization for production. We produce our material lists, our shop drawings. We move into material production, which is pressing the panels, finger joining the lumber, gluing the glue lamp together. We bring these products to the CNC machine where the CNC code works on it. All throughout the process, we have quality control and quality assurance that we're checking off on. And this comes out in just-in-time shipping for site installation. Um, this is an example of one of the single piece shop drawings that's produced from that 3D model. So this is an automated output from these 3D models, but there is some human control and we're saying these are the important dimensions for quality control that need to be marked up and someone needs to write in by hand to make sure that they're exactly right. So it's not a fully automated system, but the base geometry, everything out of this, comes out of that 3D model in a semi-automated system. So manufacturing, fabrication is arranged in a linear process from the start of, the, of production to the end. We can't start making panels that are needed somewhere else because you've switched the design and plop them in. It's going to mess up the whole fabrication process. So everything needs to be ready to go in a clean package before the go button's pressed in this complex system. So this, um, then the loads are arranged on trucks perfectly to match the installation sequence. This requires 4D construction modeling to know what that installation sequence is on site and know what that's going to be before production starts of these panels in the facility. So again, the, plan the level of planning and detail runs much further than we're traditionally used to seeing. So the bottleneck is having a completed design and the second bottleneck is the framing on the CNC machine. So design with achievable outcomes in mind and keep these, these in the back of your head. So CNC machinery. We have multiple CNC machines available, and there's, there's many ones on the market. We have three. We have a, a PBA by Hundiger, a Curnot, which is a French machine, and a K2, which is another timber framing machine. So the more CNC machines you have, obviously, the more capacity, but each one of these machines is specialized for a specific product, a specific outcome, and they all have specific tolerances for what they can deliver. The more you know about these, the better you can design your buildings to fit together simpler and, and give everyone less headaches on, on site and create a more successful project. And shipping is in reverse order on the trucks. Uh, you have to ensure that everything's safe for stacking, so you might want panels in a certain order on site. That doesn't mean it's going to transport perfectly. So there's a lot more work that needs to go on this from safety requirements throughout to make sure loading and unloading is safe for everyone involved and shipping down. Um, there's maximum bundle sizes. There's uh, no room for production issues. Once it's loaded on the truck, you don't want to unload and, ha and have more waste. So this is about waste optimization in terms of duplicate movement, like the, the Toyota total production system. That's what we're looking at using here to reduce duplicate movements of waste. Uh, this is an example. Uh, if anyone toured First Tech yesterday, the inside of the building, what comes out of this entire process is a kit of parts that goes together extremely Quickly, each of these beams installs in five to ten minutes with those pre-engineered RICON connections. And we have installers who can install over 14,000 square feet of CLT floor panels in one day. And just another shot of the exterior of the building here. Now, I'll talk about uh, some other mass timber building systems available. Post beam and platform. Post and platform. Platform hybrid on traditional frames. Um, industrial tilt-up and boutique. So we'll look at a few examples of each of these. This is carbon 12. It's uh, somewhat similar to first tech, although much different, but it's that post-beam 
and panel optimized solution for that. It's an eight-story residential tower, the first tall wood project in the United States. It was 242 CLT panels that were installed in just over 70 days, and it uses a hybrid steel brace frame core, and again, that brace frame core between the steel and the CLT mass timber package is integrated in one single 3D model at the end of the day to fit together. This is UBC brought commons, took two months to fabricate in the manufacturing facility, two months to install on site, so you can see how fast it, it is fabricated and how fast it installs. It's uh, revolutionary for engineering with CLT as it's the first system that uses that true post and platform technology. You see there's no beams in here, it's just glue lamb columns going to CLT flat plates. So this reduces your floor to floor height significantly and is probably the most cost effective solution out there but it's limited to a 10 foot by 15 foot grid, which is the CLT panel production dimensions, which are related to the trucking dimensions as you can't ship something wider than 10 feet without a number of special permits and pilot cards and all sorts of added costs downstream. So it's the tallest, was, sorry, was the tallest uh, mass timber hybrid building in the world. I believe there's a new one in Norway that's just surpassed it last week and it's going to go up a, a bit further. This was 173 feet tall and 18 stories located in Vancouver, BC. It's also part of a fully pre-designed and coordinated BIM system. Just another shot of the project here. Um, Virtuoso, this is a sample of that platform hybrid. The, it's a quiet floor system where we're seeing developers take light stick frame multifamily projects, five to six stories, and now they're integrating mass timber panels as the floor plates there instead of traditional eye joists or studs. They're doing this because it's helping for on-site um, speed of installation, labor issues, and um, it provides a higher quality product overall to the end client there. So here we had 160 CLT panels lifted at a rate of one every 12 minutes, and it was around 4,500 square feet installed in a three hour window. So they're doing around 9,000 square feet a day and this project was not designed for CLT. It's a complex dynamic floor plate with all sorts of crazy shapes in it, and it just happened to fit for the project team, but wasn't designed for it in mind to begin with. Another example of the same system, a uh, platform hybrid, a six-story hotel that we just finished in Penticton, British Columbia. It has lightwood floor system, lightwood vertical bearing system throughout, but where they wanted to, they showed off mass timber to give it a high quality feel as a first class hotel there. So they're integrating these various systems to combine something that as a whole has a higher project value. One of the most important things for this project was the wood provided substantial weight savings over the concrete option they were looking at where they would have had to drive piles into the lake shore. So this cut down their schedule by nearly half and cut down their cost significantly to use this system here. Uh, Brentwood Library, another example of this platform hybrid, but this time instead of lightwood frame walls, we're putting it on a steel frame there. So there's many options for how you can integrate mass timber into these different building systems. Again, the most important thing is using that 3D model to coordinate all these trades and make sure the tolerances between them match up properly. And industrial tilt-up projects. So we have a number of projects where we're doing warehouses, gyms, garages, fire halls, these aren't these award-winning, beautiful projects, but they are cost-effective, and what we're seeing is a replacement of either precast concrete or projects that have a slow schedule to develop, and now they want something much rapider. They need a project, say, five months instead of a year that they were looking at with their concrete solution. They'll come to us and redevelop these. So it's lightweight, it can be more cost-effective than precast concrete, and it can be deployed extremely fast. And where did we learn all of these skills and how did we develop them to integrate them? Our traditional market was boutique projects, libraries, schools, government offices, very high-end projects that are award-winning, complicated, and require very tight precision and tolerances to produce. From doing all of these very high-end projects, we've been able to refine those systems and develop them into this rapid deployment model where we can produce more cost-effective systems but at a higher speed and still a high quality because of these complex projects that we've completed previously. So one example of this is the Rocky Ridge Recreation Facility in Calgary, Alberta. 
It's uh, the largest free-form timber roof in North America. It includes nearly 300,000 square feet of floor area. We're looking at about a fifth of the area underneath in this pool here. It also includes hockey arenas, gyms, the running track, tennis courts. And it was produced ahead of schedule and under budget from using this, this system. And our next biggest project coming up is uh, the Microsoft Campus. I'm not sure if I can fully say the name. But it's uh, nearly 400, yeah, too late. <laughs> nearly 400,000 square feet of mass timber, concrete composite panels. And it, it's scheduled to have a three month install schedule over four separate phases of mass timber integration. So, in summary, cross slam timber is a leading technology in construction. And this is what I'm calling Industry 3.x. And we'll see this move forward to Industry 4.0. But you're seeing some of the systems we're using and how they integrate together. Um, rapid project deployment via, via modern digital delivery systems, structural placement for concrete and steel where it makes sense. So not every instant makes sense to replace something, but there's usually an opportunity somewhere in there. It provides schedule savings, cost competitive on a project life cycle basis, maybe not on a material per material basis, but a project life cycle taking into account everything, and environmental performance performer and it's part of a global revolution. So this is this is the future of construction and mass timbers on the forefront of it. Other construction industries will pick that up as time moves along, but you're seeing all these changes first in mass timber and that's why we have a lot of excitement today. So thank you for your time and uh, I'll pass it on.